If you are worried you have Lyme disease or just like the outdoors and want the peace of mind of knowing whether you have Lyme disease or not, there is a new Lyme screening test based on decades of research by Dr. Richard Marconi, a professor at VCU Medical Center. For more information, visit glymedx.com. That's G-L-Y-M-E-D-X.com. Or email at info at glymedx.com. Infectious diseases. Research. Medicine. Health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. So what is loss of fever? Let's learn more about it. Right now, I am pleased to welcome my guest, returning expert guest, infectious disease doctor and author, Dr. Judy Stone. Hello, Dr. Stone, and welcome back to the program. Hi, Robert. Thank you so much for having me back. Yes, ma'am. Very happy to have you. All right. So loss is in the news. Um, a lot of people are probably thoroughly unaware of it. So let's, um, let's go ahead and start with the basics. What is loss of fever? Okay, so loss is a virus. It's a member of the arena virus family. And one of the important things to know is that it's mostly animal-borne uh, through rodent contact, although there is some human-to-human -human spread, like uh, with close contact, not casual contact, but close exchange of body fluids. Okay. Now, where in the world is this endemic? It's only been seen in West Africa. Uh, the cases in the U.S. and Europe have all been, and there have only been a handful of cases, uh, have all been people who worked in West Africa and brought it back uh, to these other continents. This German case today is interesting, uh, sad, but in interesting in that it's the first case acquired outside of Africa. Right, right. That's what they're saying. Though I did see a little comment on, on ProMed today. They, uh, The person, the moderator, uh, did cite a study saying that this is actually the second case acquired in Germany. I'm not sure about the facts. I didn't have time to research. I, that. I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but but yeah. According to to German officials that have been interviewed, they're saying this is that is the first uh, local transmission of loss of fever. Uh, how many cases are seen in West Africa annually? I've read varying reports of between three hundred thousand and five hundred thousand a year, uh, with a, a death rate of about five thousand. So while well, it is a hemorrhagic fever, it's not nearly uh, the problem that Ebola was. Right. And uh, so what are the symptoms of somebody that has loss of fever? They're really vague. Uh, they're flu-like. And actually, that first missionary you mentioned was thought to have malaria. Right. Um, and because the, the symptoms are so nonspecific with fever, uh, sore throat, vomiting, uh, diarrhea in some cases. It's very nonspecific. Okay. And concerning diagnosis and treatment, what, 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 what do we have there? It's difficult to diagnose. I think that a lot of cases in Africa are missed because they don't have the technology to do it. Again, by the time... Um, the tests are, require specialized tests that are not going to be available in, in most of the communities there. And uh, turn positive PCR tests turn positive about a week to 10 days after infection. Antibody tests are longer than that. Uh, so by then, somebody is likely to become uh, sick and be able to transmit the infection. It's very poor diagnostics. Okay. Now... You mentioned that there's been cases reported in the U.S. before. Um, what can you tell me? Uh, tell us about that. There have been a half dozen or so cases. All people who worked in uh, worked in West Africa. Uh, I think the most important thing to to note about these is that no nobody was secondarily infected. So even though, for example, the, the case last year who died in New Jersey, right. uh, that gentleman was ill for several days and out, out and about uh, in public without 
uh, being in any isolation, and yet he didn't transmit that uh, to any anybody else who came in contact with him, more than 100 people. Uh, so that that's the thing to emphasize. It really is, in most cases, uh, not transmitted casually person to person, and uh, there have been no secondary cases in the U.S. or, or Europe until now. Okay. Now, Emery was contacted last week to receive uh, this other medical missionary who has since been confirmed. And this is where a lot of, well, not a lot, several, four, maybe three or four Ebola patients were treated during that outbreak. Um, How does Lhasa compare to Ebola? It's much less infectious. It's much less of of a problem. Uh, first of all, most of the cases of Lhasa, about 80%, are asymptomatic. Um, and Lhasa uh, has a fatality rate of about 1% uh, compared to the 70-80% uh, or more with Ebola. So it's much less uh, deadly and a milder infection. Most people will get, get uh well, uneventfully, the the main exception to that is pregnant women, and if you're in your third tri- trimester, uh, it's very very deadly at that point. Okay, um, now this this patient was taken to Emory University Hospital and put into the Serious Communicable Diseases Unit, um, which is the same place the Ebola patients were taken. Um, can you talk about this unit? Would you can you uh, give the, my audience a description of what? what this is. I, I can, and in, in par- a little bit, in part because um, at the TROP Med meetings this year, they had a mock-up of that unit that people could visit. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, it was, it was really eye-opening. Uh, so the unit has uh, m- multiple rooms. There's an anteroom where people go in and is uh, sort of a clean room, and people... Uh, can move about freely, and then there are uh, changing rooms, and then you go into the patient care rooms, uh, and people check you to make sure that you have uh, your proper gown, glove, boots, mask, that everything is covered before you enter the patient care room. And similarly, on your way back out, uh, you have an observer to make sure that you're not recontaminating yourself, which is how people, uh, most of the healthcare workers who have become ill with Ebola have gotten infected. Uh, one of the things that was striking visiting this mock unit uh, in Philadelphia was how difficult it is to work in that kind of setting. Uh, it's very hard to see and it's very hard to manipulate, for example, to administer medications because the protective clothing is so cumbersome. Um, so there are lots of precautions uh, and safeties in place. There's also negative air, air flow um, as well as people monitoring uh, that you're not contaminating anything. Very good. Now, last question. If someone is planning on traveling to West Africa or going there for work or missionary work, uh, what can they do to prevent contracting Lhasa? Well, don't don't eat the uh, rats there, uh, which some people apparently do. <laughs> food. Uh, it's important to use good hygiene, staying in clean areas. Uh, there, what's happening is that the garbage and food in some of the houses, uh, where they store grain within their houses, is what attracts the rodents, and then uh, the rodents. The most common thought for how tran- it's transmitted is is uh, through the urine or droppings from the rodents contaminating uh, contaminating grain. The other, the other thing I wanted to mention, Robert, is sure. that uh, in cleaning up areas, and this is more this is true in the U.S. Uh, uh, those of us who have mice in our house on occasion, uh, it's important to avoid aerosolizing. Uh, when you're cleaning up droppings from the mice, because that's how tra- Hanta is transmitted here. is It's just like that, only with Lhasa uh, in uh, in Africa. So minimalize, minimalizing aerosolization is critical uh, when you're cleaning up areas. Great advice. Dr. Judy Stone, thanks again for lending your expertise, ma'am. Thank you very much. Appreciate uh, okay, you having you, me back. You bet. Take Bye-bye. care.